Hello, this is a Trade Site Educational Trade Recap. I wanted to talk a little bit today about the importance of the Trade Site Market Directional Tool, what it means for trading specifically in the second half of the trading day in the afternoons, and also give an example of what we mean by this and, and why it's important. So I wanted to start out, this is the ES, this is the S&P 500 E-mini futures contract. Uh, this is what you're seeing right here on the chart is from Monday's action right here. And what I want to show people is that you know the first 90 minutes to an hour and a, two hours of the day are typically the most exciting as a trader. That's where the most action occurs. Whether or not we can then come back from lunch and get some good trades depends a lot on where the market's at from, from the use of this tool in particular, from the perspective of this tool. So this is that Monday, and we're seeing a lot of days like this where we get a movement early, get a pretty decent move in the first hour, as you can see, and there's good trading opportunities there and maybe partly on the way back up here. But, but by just an hour and a half, into the market, we've settled back onto what we call the VWAP midpoint area of the market. And that's the middle of the range for the day. The VWAP is the volume weighted average price. I'm not going to define all this today, but this is what the tool shows us. And, and so as we drift through lunch, you'll see that it's just kind of a pendulum swinging back and forth beyond this level. And we come back from lunch at uh, 12 o'clock my time. I'm on mountain time here. And so what we like to see for a good trading environment in the afternoon is the market moving, heading up or down, getting some separation from this VWAP midpoint. And if you don't sort of get that, and in the case of this uh, setup here, I would have said, I would have liked to have seen at least a breakout over these highs right here or a breakdown under these lows uh, to really get the market moving before I'd get too excited about any of the uh, stock call potential that we might see in the afternoon. You really want to get away from that. And as you can see on this particular Monday, uh, all we did was kind of fizzle back and we spent the last hour of the day stuck to that VWAP midpoint area, which is not really a great trading environment. That's a neutral reading on the market. It doesn't mean that stocks are going to work very well typically. You're going to be real picky about your entry points and uh, find a lot of intraday setups at best, maybe some energy stocks. And even if I slide back to, uh, let's say, the prior day, this is the Friday before, you know, again, some movement early on, back to the VWAP midpoint, uh, stayed near there over lunch. Coming out of lunch, it almost you know we were at drifted to highs here, and instead of keep going, which would have been a good environment, instead right after lunch when they kind of came back, they brought it right back, and, and we ended up just drifting back to that VWAP midpoint. So there's just way too many days recently where we end up back on that VWAP midpoint, and and that's not really great for the afternoon trading. Here's the prior Thursday. You can see a strong morning, a lot of good trading opportunities for us, even a move after lunch back to the downside, and then you know. The afternoon, they come back from lunch, they turn back up right into the day's range and right to that VWAP midpoint. Okay, and That's not really what you like to see, but I, what I wanted to point out was uh, something that we saw on Tuesday. So here's a look at the market on Tuesday. and You can see the trading actually wasn't that exciting early on. Uh, and then we got a bump up uh, just heading into that two-hour mark, which is kind of an unusual time. And, and we're sitting here at lunch. Uh, at, at new highs, which is fine, but as you've seen a lot recently, you know, even when the case is when that happens, and there's there's not a lot of action over lunch, even when stocks are drifting one way or the other, uh, you know, you end up drifting back to that view at midpoint. So this is about the point right here where we come back from lunch, and again, you know, based on what we've seen a lot of recently, you might have expected us to drift back. But there's good separation here between this view at midpoint area, that's this green line and the purple line here. Okay, there's good separation between that and the actual trading. So market direction is strong. And if instead we don't break down and come back towards that, then that's one of those days where we might expect to find some decent uh, trading activity or possibilities in the afternoon. As, it, as you can see, uh, we didn't. We, we kept holding up and, and, and went higher even. Okay, so what does that really mean to trading? Well, let me take a look, focus you on something we've been watching for a while. This is the daily chart pattern on Cerner, C-E-R-N, and we had been watching this formation because it's a very long, uh, we've been going since back in August, uh, cup and handle style formation. I mean, if you take this as a general cup, yes, there was kind of this breakdown, but you gapped right back up, and, and as a general rule, it's almost a symmetrical cup here, came up uh, early in January near that, that point that we had established in August. A little pullback is what we call a handle, now we're heading back up, and we're looking for that breakout over that point. So again, because it's so so many days, it's few and far between that we actually get the action in the afternoon that we like to see in the futures. The odds of then having on top of it a really good breakout, not just an intraday pattern, but a good solid daily chart pattern uh, occur at that same time uh, is a little light, obviously. We don't see it too often. Uh, but let me show you what we actually did on Cerner on uh, this particular afternoon, which was Monday, uh, I'm sorry, Tuesday, January 29th, the day that the futures held up in the afternoon. And what you can see here, this is the uh, 
This is the five minute chart of Cerner and on Tuesday, and we kind of went down lower in the morning and wiggled a bit and it was drifting up. Now that breakout price that we saw on the daily chart pattern was $83.97. And so you know, here we are coming back from lunch and we're approaching that level. And a lot of times people are going to make the mistake. They're going to say, well, you know, this stock's already up a buck and something uh, for the day from the lows, you know. Uh, it's not something I want to buy, but but they forget the whole point, which is that you're supposed to be buying with the right market environment. You're supposed to be buying these these daily chart breakouts. So we've got here. I have a uh, seven month daily chart breakout, generally a cup and handle style formation that I just showed you on the daily chart, approaching a breakout over 83.97 and doing so in the afternoon after lunch on a day where the futures are showing some real strong signs for once and not just drifting back to that VWAP midpoint. And so let me just show you how that sort of plays out. There's the trigger there, uh, you know, in, in, with about uh, just over an hour left, uh, over 83.94. And what you see is you get a real strong, nice move. Look at the volume even picks up after that. And you get this move all the way up to... Um, 84 and a half or so. It's at least it's a half point, nice clean move. It's the exact type of trigger that you'd want to see, uh, trigger and movement that you'd want to see off of a, a real strong daily chart pattern. Okay, and so again, because it was the afternoon, a lot of days I'm real tepid on the afternoon. I don't like to take trades in the afternoon uh, if we're not seeing strong signs out of the market. But on that particular day, uh, we saw some good signs out of the market, and that gave us that opportunity. That was only an hour's worth of trading, but it's a clean, high probability money maker. You don't need to carry it into the next day, as you can see. You know the market sold off the next morning uh, on CERN, and you know it really wasn't about anything but that initial move. Um, but a very clean activity supported by good, strong futures setup and separation that, that held away from, kept away from that VWAP midpoint in the afternoon. I think it's real important to focus on that. Too many people miss uh, really what, what differentiates a good market environment and a bad market environment in the afternoon.